everybody's favorite teeming metropolis. It's Late Night with David Letterman. Tonight, Lee Marvin and Child Inventors. Also, Chris Elliott and Come On and Defect Booth. And now, a man who could straighten out this mess in the Philippines with one phone call. Thank you so much. Thank you, folks. Thank you. Oh, thank you. I, I certainly appreciate that. Welcome to the uh, welcome to the program. What do you think, Paul? Welcome to the program. It's simple, to the point, personable. Welcome to the program. Very nice. Why don't you welcome them as well? Welcome to the program. Very nice. Because after all, you know, we're in the living rooms and bedrooms of uh, literally millions and millions and millions of American viewers. We sure are. They're watching us. A lot of them are undressed. That's right. Many here in the audience are undressed. Uh, boy, now, uh, this Philippines election deal, unbelievable. So, uh, apparently the slogan of this deal is, uh, uh, presidential election in the Philippines. Remember, your vote counts many, many, many times. So, Ferdinand Marcos, the incumbent, is now in the Guinness Book of World Records. He has the record now for most money spent by a politician on ammunition. So we think that's kind of... <laughs> there was one town where uh, Marcos, they counted the ballots, he had 13,000 votes for himself, and uh, for Corazon Aquino, the vote was nothing. 13,000 to nothing. <laughs> now, look at it this way. Even if this is rigged, it's got to make Walter Mondale feel better. You know, I mean... <laughs> Well, we had a big uh, spy spopping. Spy spopping? So I what? think that's spy swapping. I, it came out spy spy spopping. Spy spopping. No, no it's not. It's not spy spopping. It's spy swapping. <laughs> the uh, the Soviets gave us back uh, five Western spies. We gave them Donald Manus. I'm feeling like Bob Hope here. What is? Okay, that's enough. Anything else there? You know, what we're going to do. I think this is a pretty good idea. Uh, there is in this city, New York City, of course, the greatest city in North America. I point that out for the benefit of cheap applause. Uh, and, uh, well, this haircut is going to see it again. Uh, there's a Soviet mission to the United Nations, and we have a camera out there, and we thought today would be a good opportunity to try and talk some of those people into defecting. Hal, take a look at the, uh, take a look at the camera shot for us. It's at, uh, 3rd Avenue and 67th Street. And that, I guess, is the uh, Soviet mission to the United Nations. Yeah, there it is, right there. My, what a lovely building. And uh, I believe Larry uh, Bud Melman is there with us. There he is, sir. <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, looks like a Chuck Norris movie, doesn't it? Uh, Larry, can you hear me? Hello, Dave. Can you can, can you hear me all right? Yes. All right. Now you're you're within uh, you're within. I can't hear now. There's okay, traffic Larry, going fine. by. Okay, Larry. Fine. Okay. Why didn't you get on it? Uh, what? Larry, you're within the shouting distance of the uh, Soviet mission there, aren't you? Yes. Do you have the bullhorn with you? Yes. Okay. Go ahead and say a few words to the folks inside. All right. He's putting down the microphone. He's picking up the bullhorn. Oh my God. Take the safety off of that thing, Larry. I did. Okay. Hey, Soviet. <laughs> hey, Soviet. I hear Anatoly Charansky just won $50,000 on Wheel of Fortune. <laughs> Keep your heart down. All right, try one more, Larry. What are you boys having for dinner? Let me guess. Something with turnips. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> okay. Larry, do you have one more? Holler one more over there, Adam. All right. Yeah, excuse Larry, you haven't heard any gunfire yet, have you? Have what? Never mind. <laughs> Didn't you guys invent television and the bullhorn? <laughs> what a lot of crap. Okay, thanks, Larry. All right, that's uh, Larry out there on uh, 3rd Avenue at 67th Street, the, uh, the Soviet uh, uh, mission there to the United Nations. So a little bit later, he's going to try and talk people into defecting. <laughs> Uh, we got a great show, too. Look at this. Lee Marvin, uh, comedian Bill Hicks, and little, little itty-bitty children and their inventions. That'll be coming up on this program. Here's our friend Paul Schaefer. Oh. Hi, everybody. Thanks a lot. David. Mm -hmm. Do you yeah. think a man is entitled to wear shoulder pads? Yeah, well, you were wearing shoulder pads earlier, weren't you? I had them in. Our Took lovely wardrobe lady, Susan Hum, said you need pads. You need shoulder pads. To give you a more modern look. I had yeah. them in. Yeah. You caught me wearing them. Well, I, di I didn't catch you exactly. You were having them adjusted. And I, I was said, adjusting them yeah. in yeah. the makeup room. I took them right out because, you know, I didn't want to be made a laughing stock of them. No, you, no, you could never be the laughing oh, stock of, of this show, at thank least. Thank you for your confidence. Um... Now, are your parents coming for parents' night or not? Well, they haven't been invited yet. Now, what, well, you should invite them. I'd be thrilled if they got a free well, trip. What's the date of parents' night? The 20, February 25th. And uh, that'll be parents' night. Everybody's parents. Barbara, will your parents be here? Yeah. Okay. And uh, I, as a matter of fact, I haven't invited my mother yet either. So I should get on that. Well, let me invite your mother. All right. And you invite my mother. All right. Shirley, come to the show. Yeah. All right. And what's your mother's name? Well, you know my mother's name. Uh, Gladys. Gladys no, Letterman. No, no. No, Dorothy. I know. Wait a minute. Who told you that? Somebody well, I got told you that. secret information was passed on to me. <laughs> yeah. My okay. Ears. Yeah. Anyway, that's uh, Tuesday, February 25th. Barbara, do we have the CBS late night schedule out here or not? <laughs> yeah, apparently we do. Okay, get it for me because we want to let the folks know what they could be watching on CBS tonight. Um, <laughs> Paul, uh, we have little children inventors on the show tonight, and I have here a list of inventions and the people who invented them. I'll read you a couple of inventors or inventions, and you give me the inventor, okay? All right. We'll start out with an easy one. Radio. Marconi. No. Yeah, Come I thought on. it was Marconi, too, but it's Lee DeForest, it says here. Lee DeForest. Lee DeForest. I was going to say that. I was going to say second. Thermometer. Huh? Thermometer. That was uh, Anton Thermometer. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. It's, huh. it's right. Who invented it? Uh, let's see. Uh, uh, Galileo. Really? Yeah. So we have this here, and we can quiz you on inventions throughout the rest okay, of the evening. Okay, great. I'm good. Right. Okay. Oh, I wanted to show you one other thing. This is from the uh, New York City, uh, New York Daily Post. What do they call it? The New York Post? The Post. little item in the news there, something to do with the devaluation of the dollar. Uh, new low versus yen. I thought that was kind of strange looking. All right. <laughs> That's it? Well, didn't you see it? Did you see it? Well, here, you can look at it later. Dolly hits a new low. How are we coming on that schedule, Barbara? I think the viewers are way ahead of us. Uh, it's T.J. Hooker tonight is the movie. Oh, a classic film. <laughs> and uh, the movie is called Hit and Run. Who's in the movie? Do we know? Okay, so if you want to watch that. <laughs> Who would want to watch that? <laughs> All right, here we go. We're going back to the street now. Is that... to tighten up security and, and uh, <laughs> gonna have to increase her lithium too I believe um, okay here we go it's uh, the Soviet thanks Barbara I'm sorry okay uh, Barbara's not feeling well she has a terrible cold uh, it's the Soviet mission uh, to the United Nation it's 136 East 67th Street here in Manhattan let's go down there and see if hi Larry how are you Fine. Okay. Thank you, Dave. Uh, I'm standing across the street. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. All right. What? <laughs> <laughs> How? What is the weather? Is it cold out there? It's freezing. Yeah. And have you heard from the uh, Soviet mission yet? Not yet. All right. Go ahead, Larry. Thank you, Dave. I'm standing across the street from the Soviet mission to the United Nations. It's a busy place, as you can see from the crowds of Soviet bureaucrats scurrying around me. Some of these communists are loyal children of Lenin. Others yearn to be free. It is to these poor huddled masses that I now say WAT, P Re V G I T. That means in Russian, come on and defect. Okay. 
Now, you're, you're going to try and induce some people to defect there tonight, aren't you? Yes. All right, go right ahead, Larry. Don't let me stop you. Okay. Although I wish someone would. Hello, Nikita. Want to defect? Yes. Now that you're in the USA, how does it feel to be breathing the sweet air of freedom? Feels great. Fooled you. This is a bus stop. You're breathing diesel fumes. <laughs> You know, his, his timing has gotten even better, hasn't it? Uh, okay, Larry, are you going to give this man a prize for defecting? Why, sure. All right. Say. <laughs> That's all right, Larry. We've turned your microphone off. Thank you. What did you give him? What did we give him? Toothbrush. What? Toothbrush. Uh, <laughs> okay. All right, let's try one more, All Larry. Right. Gosh, this is going well. Hello, comrade. What is your name in English? Charlie. I notice you are wearing ill-fitting clothes. Are you a KGB agent? No, I'm not. Lying Soviet scum. <laughs> Perhaps that smokeless ashtray will convince you oh, of the God. superiority of the American way of life. <laughs> Duh. <laughs> All right, do we have time for one Good more? Good evening, Nikita. Want to defect? Wait a minute, Larry, what? hold it, hold it, hold no, it. No, he wants me to hold it. Wait. Okay, we have, time, we have time for one more right now. Larry, did someone goose you? <laughs> no. Okay, go ahead, Larry. All right. Good evening, Nikita. Want to defect? Oh, my. <laughs> no. Well, if you defect... I'll throw in a six-month subscription to Penthouse. Is it a deal? Yeah. Oh, yes. Oh, my. Oh, my. All right, is that it, Larry? What? Uh, never mind. We'll come back to you later. Okay. Uh, we got a, a top flight show here. Lee okay. Marvin is with us. Uh, also, uh, children inventors and comedian Bill Hicks. All that and uh, much, much more when we return, folks. Come on back. In 1906, Lee DeForest, a 33-year-old American inventor, built the first amplifying vacuum tube, which was almost immediately wedded with Marconi's wireless invention to produce radio. I guess we could give them co-credit for that. It's very interesting. You so don't think it is interesting? It's like, no, I do. So it's like, DeForest plays the mamba, listen to the radio. Stop it. Don't you remember? Rubber tire. Who invented the rubber tire? Rubber tire? Yeah, the rubber tire. Uh, B.F., Mr. B.F. Goodrich. Charles Goodyear. Close. Steam locomotive. Uh, that I used to know. <laughs> okay. Well, no, no, no. Uh, George Stevenson. Oh, I know a George Stevenson. <laughs> used to play bass for the Bonvilles in Thunder Bay. Uh, with the who? The Bonnevilles. With the Bonnevilles. Yeah, great band. All right, here's the movie exactly if you're thinking of looking. Hit and Run, Paul Perry, Claudia Crone. Ooh, she's my favorite, that Claudia Crone. <laughs> Very good actress, a fine actress. Claudia Cohen, you mean? No, Crone, C-R-O-N, says here. Cron, Crone. An encounter with a mysterious woman leaves a cabbie framed for murder. Two mm. stars. This is the CBS Late Movie. I don't think so. Thank you. Uh, uh, my first guest tonight uh, is a terrific actor. He has uh, been in such films as Cat Baloo, Ship of Fools, The Dirty Dozen, and his latest film is called Delta Force. Please welcome back to the show, Lee Marvin. <laughs> Lee, how are you? Nice to see you. Nice to be here. Nice to be around here. Any way you want to do it. Nice to see you. Nice crowd. Thank you very much. They How are fine people. We get the How best audiences in the show business in here. Uh, first, the last time we saw you was in May. It was in California. Yeah. And you'd come over from your home in Arizona. Right. And now you're in New York. That's right. So now, uh, how do you like New York? I like it a lot better. A lot better than? Than my ranch in Arizona. Why is that? 
Because the termites got it. You have termites? Yeah, I'm a termite wrangler now. You asked me if I had a ranch, I said, no, I got a house. They got the house, and now I'm on the loose. <laughs> Terrible. What kind of house do you have? Not much of one anymore. Yeah, but is it... It used uh... to be about 25 feet high. It's sinking about a foot a day. Uh-huh. Because they're eating it. Uh, and, and what can you do about that? Uh, just, you know, step on them and stuff like that. But they... <laughs> There's an awful lot of them. Yeah, they keep you, know. you busy night and day, I would yeah. think. But uh, now tell us, tell us about the house. What is the structure? Because I know termites will only eat in certain kind of woods. It's adobe. It's, uh, now what is of, adobe? Adobe is made out of the stuff that horses leave and mud and straw. Uh-huh. And they like that horse stuff. Uh-huh. <laughs> and, and this is an old dwelling? Well, it's very old now. Yeah. Say, you know, and, and, uh, uh, but there's nothing that can be done about this, seriously? Well, you can shoot them. But we don't have enough ammunition. We use it all in the you can, But you can't... <laughs> You, you can't you can't fumigate the property. Yeah, but I want to live. I mean, you know, yeah, I, I, I go with it. Yeah. So eventually, what'll happen? We don't know. I'm trying to sell to some Easterner. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Look, it's in the Sun Belt. Uh, now, d d did you live in New York for a while when you were a kid? Were you born here? Yeah, I was born here. Where about? East 15. Uh huh. And did you get started to acting here? Yeah, out in Central Park. Yeah, doing what kind of stuff? Dodging and you know. All that stuff. This is what they're doing now. You know, yeah. it's throwing snowballs and cloud fights. Did you? Stuff. Yeah. And you, uh, wh when did you move west to, to go into films? Or did you go into films here? No, I wasn't. No, I, well, no, I went to the Marine Corps mm -hmm. here. And then uh, that taught me how to act. So I came back here and started acting. <laughs> now, now ex explain that process, how the Marine Corps taught you how to act. It teaches you how to be tough, pal. <laughs> <laughs> Total fear, you know. <laughs> and, uh, so, and then you go to Los Angeles and you become an actor. That's right. And what, what was your first uh, role there? Uh, yes, sir. Uh huh. In what film? That was it. Yes, sir. Uh huh. I've forgotten the name of it. That was my speaking part. Yes, sir. And that was it. And that yeah, was. And I was off and running. I mean, I said, "Look <laughs> at that kid. He can say yes, sir, and not the matter anymore." Yeah, yeah. Uh, how, you do, you don't drink anymore, do you? As well as little as possible. Yeah. You know, so but uh, but but there for a while it was uh, like a hobby, a real hobby. Well, Seriously. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, do, do you have any great stories that you can tell or that you remember about uh, being goofy and? Oh, I can tell you stories about other actors that were goofy. All right. We'll settle for one of those. Um, one of my old pals, Oliver Reed, you know, he uh, <clears throat> he doesn't drink anymore either. We were down in Mexico, and he'd never been there, and so we were staying at the Campo de Mexico Hotel and Motel in Durango. <laughs> so we were trying to figure out our parts before the film started. And having a few of these, he was getting loud, and he's British, you know. Yeah. What was the film, by the way? Did you mention that? I don't know. It, uh, the great something, the great scout in Cat House Thursday, I think it was called. Oh. So we were getting kind of noisy and having fun, and uh, the local Mexican pistoleros were sitting around, and they were in Spanish and talking about the gringos. And so I said, "Hold it down, Ollie, hold it down." He said, "Why?" I said, "Yeah." yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he said, "Well, they're standing." So he looked around, and he saw all these Mexicans. Suddenly he got irate, you know how the British are. Mm -hmm. and he jumped up and he screamed at them all. He said, "I am British, not American. I am British." We sank your Aramada. I said, what? <laughs> I said, sit down, will you? But, you know, it was Spain, not Mexico. <laughs> that had it. So I said, who cares? I said, look, just look at me and look me right in the eyes because they're coming out now. And there's a, mm. So he said, what? I said, watch me. Don't make a move. And all these guns came out and they started shooting in the ceiling. The stuff was falling in our drinks. It just, I had a martini outside. You had about that much silver. Uh -huh. from the <laughs> he couldn't believe it. Because that's how Mexico goes when you drink. It was a lot of fun. Yeah. No, nobody get hurt? No, then he was doing handstands on the chair, and he nope. fell off and hurt his shoulder, so I figured I had him whipped. I didn't have to worry about him in the show. Yeah. Did not, when he did the handstand, did that uh, restore peace? Did they like that? Yeah, they like it when he got hurt. Oh, they loved it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're going to do a uh, commercial. We'll be back here with uh, Lee Marvin, and also we're trying to get people to... inventors on tonight. You know anything about inventions? No, not at all. Ballpoint pen. Yeah, I don't have any idea about that. John Loud invented the ballpoint pen. Mm. Uh-huh. Give me a hot one. Oh, this one's easy. Dynamite. Oh, are you The prize. That's right. That's right. Pulitzer? No, no. The Nobel Prize. Nobel Prize. 
Uh, and one more, the watch, the timepiece, the chronometer. Yes. I don't know that one either. That's good. Heinlein, Peter Heinlein. Heineken's beer. No, no, Heinlein. Yeah. <laughs> Heinlein. Uh, 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 did you push somebody out of a school window here? Did you go to school here and you push somebody out of a window, or does that ring a bell with you? Yeah. yeah, yeah. What was the deal on that? It was a Quaker school. No. Uh -huh. You know, and, uh, and uh, I don't know, he just got in my... You know, well, he was... And everybody was watching, so they asked me to leave. It was pretty simple. <laughs> now, was that the official record that you just... Uh, and they asked me to leave. Why did you push the guy out of the window? Well, he threw the trash out when we were cleaning up the room, and he called me a dirty name, which I can't oh, stand. I you know, so, so you, was, you had to... How old were you then? Moral problem with me. I think I was 12. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, now He's tell a me... lightweight. He rolled pretty good, so I didn't... <laughs> What, now tell me about this film. It's called Strike Force. This is a the Delta Force. I'm sorry, Delta Force. Forgive me. Yeah. And this is a uh, what is it about? You and uh, Chuck, Chuck Norris, Norris in this film. We're the Delta Force. Yeah. Well, the beginning of the film's a you know a very sad thing about hostages being mm -hmm. taken on a plane, so you can cry and mm -hmm. and relate to them. Mm -hmm. And then as it gets heavy, uh, we get to move in. And then the fun starts, because that's when the body count starts. You know. <laughs> and, uh, you know, Chuck Norris is no slouch. And so and I got a few things there. Yeah, and it satisfies everybody in the yeah, family. You come in and settle the score. Yes, you, we you do. You and Chuck come in together. Right. Now, who, who are some of the hostages on this plane? Oh, there's a whole lot of them. Um, one of them that should have been there. Oh, she still is. is uh, Shelley Winters, of course. Martin Balsam. <laughs> Martin Balsam, who Joy Bishop, it? Lainey Kazan, George Kennedy. Yep. Uh, and Shelley Winters. That's yeah. right. Now, where, where are all these... Shelley Bishop, too. Yeah, There's another right. one that belongs to that, though. <laughs> and, and where are all of these people going that they're traveling together? Do you have any idea where this plane is bound? No, I don't care. I'm just glad they're on it. <laughs> it's because Chuck Norris and I had a chance to blow away the eyes. Now, did it's you... entertainment. Did you ever work with the Shelley Winters? Oh, yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah. Did you get along with her all right? I've forgotten. <laughs> it was a long time ago. I think everybody gets along look, with her for a while. Look, I'm not in the book, and that's all that yeah, counts. Okay. Um, and and do you, now, do you like going around? You're just finishing up a big tour promoting the film, is that correct? Yeah. Now, you, do you enjoy that kind of thing? No, I do it for money. Yeah. Because uh -huh. I, I want all you people to get in there and see the... <laughs> and then that lets me build another house at the termites game. Yeah, that's terribly gracious of you. Yeah, um, and it's good for the termites, too. It gets <laughs> even with them. Now, is this, this movie is out now, isn't it? Yeah, no, no it comes out Friday comes on out Friday. Uh, Valentine's Day. So oh, good. You want to take your Valentine's thing to... Ba, 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 ba. That's the one to see, yeah, pal. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Now, uh, they're holding up a sign here that says song. Does that ring a bell with you? Song. Song. You did a little singing. What was it, Paint Your Wagon? You oh, were yeah, singing? yeah. What did you sing there? You and, you and Clint did a duet? No, I sang my own stuff. What, what did you sing there? I sang about five or six numbers. Yeah, and we, I think we have an album of yours here somewhere. Do we have it out here? Okay, well, you want to listen to a little bit of you sure. singing? What is, what is he singing here? Well, this is Paint Your Wagon. I guess this is the title uh, uh, song from the movie. Paint Your Wagon, Lee Marvin. Let's listen together now. Here it goes. <laughs> That's nice. Okay. That's very nice. It's real quality, you know, a lot of... <laughs> um, there wasn't much of a body count in that film, though. <laughs> yeah, I hope you can uh, wrestle your house back from the termites. I don't think so, but I'm going to get them. All right, nice right. to see you again. Chuck Norris is coming out with his. <laughs> All yeah, right, we'll good. work on it. All right, thanks, Lee. Nice thanks for what we did that already. Uh, we'll be back here, folks. <laughs> Some dark night on a lonely street in a neighborhood you're not familiar with. Maybe you got off at the wrong stop. He will be your only hope. Who are you? Sent here from the future with one mission in mind, to regulate. Hey, you, hold it there. Make room for Chris Elliott in a new running character as the regulator guy. All right. But don't do it anymore. He's waiting. He's watching. And he's coming soon to NBC.
Tomorrow uh, on this program, uh, actress Ray Don Chong uh, will be joining us and Mike the Dog from the motion picture down and out in Beverly Hills. Have you seen that, Paul? No, not yet. Yeah, okay. I meant to see it. Well, you should see it because we have someone on from the film tomorrow. I'll see it tonight. Do you know who we have coming on from the film tomorrow? Uh, Ray Don Chong. No, I just I mentioned it. <laughs> Mike the Dog. Mike the dog? Mike the dog. I gotta go see a film because Mike the dog is on TV? I, I had to. <laughs> uh, yeah, that'll be uh, Mike the dog tomorrow. For his, a fine dog. And uh, also a Tito Puente. You guys gonna play with this man? Yeah. All right. We're Looking all forward really to this? excited about it. Okay. My next guest, uh, what else are we gonna do? Oh, uh, Larry's still out on the street. I guess we'll go back to him a little bit later. We will? Great. Uh, my next guest is, boy, this is incredible. Can you believe this, Paul? He's on the show. Uh, what a great guy. He was the former star of the hit series, The Fugitive Guy. He will be back starting next week on this very network in a brand new program called The Regulator Guy. Please welcome Chris Elliott, ladies and gentlemen. This is for you. Thank you very much. Oh, a hat, a regulator oh, guy hat. That's sure. great. Thank That's you. You know, yours. it's uh, great to see you again. Uh, I know you've been here with us before, but believe me, it's always an honor. I'm a big fan of yours, and uh, you, you've really influenced my work greatly, and it's a thrill to have a legend like yourself on the show. Well, thanks very much, Dave. Sure. You know, uh, that's what I like best about making it in this business. What, what is that? Getting my rump kissed by a professional. <laughs> well, thank you very much. You're welcome. Hey, where the hell's my coffee? I have some special coffee out coffee. here. Right here. Oh, yeah, there it is. Come and bring it up. That's my cappuccino maker. I'm scalding so much. Watch it. It's Just quite put hot. that right there. Okay, there you go. Yeah, I don't know how you drink that mud, Dave. You gotta take care of your body like me. Here yeah. we go. What, uh... <laughs> <laughs> okay. Just All take right. a second. Okay. Oh, boy. <laughs> this is gonna be good. <laughs> Uh, you don't have any like a little nutmeg. nutmeg? Oh, yeah, great. we have some right there for you. Perfect. <laughs> what, uh, what what's in the cappuccino? Do you know exactly? You know, I'm not sure. It's one of those uh, Jamaican drinks, really. I think right. there's a lot of rum and tequila yeah. in it. I don't know. Well, good. Uh, go ahead and enjoy that. Welcome Hello. back to the network. I know it's been a while since the fugitive guy was uh, was dumped. And uh, what have you been doing with yourself? Well, uh, actually, uh, right after it was dumped, uh -huh. I uh, went off and spent some time with my family. Yeah. Um, which oh was yeah. A lot of fun. Oh yeah. There I am. That's right that's there. your family? Yeah. Yeah. Wait a minute. You're you're a Van Patten? Yeah, I know it seems odd. I uh, I changed my name because uh, uh -huh. you know I wanted to make it on my own. You didn't want to use their name to influence no, people like Harry. Well, that's very. Then after that, the network uh, tried me out in a couple of different spots. It didn't seem to work too good. The first was uh, co-anchoring the news with Brokaw. <laughs> uh, see right there, and that didn't kind of work a lighter out. approach to the news. He didn't yeah. like me very yeah. much. Uh -huh. Then, then the next thing, they gave me this made-for-TV movie, which uh, just did not go well at all. Never see the light of day. Uh, I think the plot's kind of weird. There I am. Uh -huh. Well, the plot is this: that the monkeys in all the world, chimpanzees, apes, they. Get Get loose, get out of their cages, and for some reason they come after me. I don't know. It was, yeah. it was, uh, what, what it was called was King Ape. King Ape, yeah. Uh, how did that end? What was the finish on that? One of them married me. Gee. Uh, but you're back. You've got a brand new uh, series. Yes, we do. Is... We've got something uh, we're calling the regulator guy. The regulator guy. guy. Now, what, yes, what, what does that mean? What are you very hopeful, very, very optimistic. optimistic yeah. it. What, what do you regulate there? Uh, well, we, there you are right well, there. Well, there I am right you over look there. look a lot yeah, different. See. Yeah, I, I did. I cut my hair real short for it. Uh -huh. uh, it was a lot of fun to put together. My hair has grown back, though, which you can see. Yeah, yeah, right. Uh, looks a lot thicker, too. <laughs> what do you mean? Well, well nothing. Uh, now, now, tell me about the regulator guy. What, what, is, what is the plot of the regulator guy? What's the plot? Well, he's a guy, he's got a very strong sense of justice, uh -huh. uh, a strong sense of right, of uh -huh. wrong, a good guy. A, yeah. a, 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 a vigilante kind of guy? Looking, taking the law into his own hands? I don't know what that is, yeah. but he's a do-gooder. Uh, but he's out there regulating right and wrong. Regulating. And he's, he's where, where is he from? That we, he's, no he's from the future, we saw He's the from the future, yeah. yeah. And, and the, that accent, what part of the world is that? I really couldn't tell you. That is that, was something they asked like, me to do, and is, I don't know. Is it Austrian or Norwegian? It's probably some, it's <laughs> Austrian, Norwegian, something yeah. like that. Well, it's very, it's very effective. Now, Thank you very much. I understand we have a, a clip of the uh, premier I don't episode. know. I just came. They, you know, threw me out here. I don't know. Do okay. you have a clip no, we, I think we have a clip all loaded up. This is uh, Chris Elliott from the very first episode of The Regulator The Regulator Guy. guy. Okay, let's take a look. Oh, yeah, this is very exciting. What are you doing there? Hey, what do you think you Hey, hey, get away from there. What's going on? He was playing with the paper cups. Well, so? They're less than a penny apiece. Oh, yeah, and who's gonna clean it up? Me? I don't think so. 
run along, sweetheart. I'll be right there. Don't you ever talk to my son again. You're just a bully. What did you say to me? That, that seems pretty violent compared to your past. You know, record. it's it's odd that you bring uh, bring that up. Uh, the network's already giving me flack about this thing. Yeah. They uh, they say that for a four minute show, uh, 176 acts of violence per show is just ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> Can you beat that? Yeah. Well, you know, I kind of agree with them. Oh man, no, I'm Dave, sorry. I'm, I'm sorry. You're one of them. No, I'm sorry. I didn't mean that. Oh boy. Well, anyway, we're going to try to soften it up a little uh -huh. bit. We're looking for a little romance, uh, trying to find a female counterpart. Yeah. What, what kind of an actress are you looking for? Somebody with big hooters. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I'm just joking. Yeah, I'm just joking. yeah. No, but seriously, if you're going to have a broad hanging around all day gabbing in your ear, she might as well be something to look at. Am I right? <laughs> yeah. Okay, listen, uh, Chris, thank you very much for what, stopping by. What, am I through by. here? No, we got to run. We got what do you the, got, the stupid dog inventors, tricks uh, coming up next or something? Inventors. We're uh, going to be a lot of fun. We'll look for that new series, though. Yeah, thanks very much. Congratulations yeah, to you. Yeah. Oh, yeah, thank you. We'll be right back, folks. Next guests are three very talented young people and winners of the Weekly Reader National Invention Contest. When was the contest held? You don't know, do you? Like uh, uh, last week? Last year? Mm. <laughs> anyway, please say hello to the inventors, uh, Ryan Johnson. I guess you're Ryan. Nice to see you, Ryan. And uh, Katie Harding. Are you Katie? Katie, nice to see you. And Susan, Susie Amlin. Did I pronounce your last name properly, Susan? Yeah. Amling? Nice to see you. And where are you folks? Where, where are you from? Mm, Bloomfield. Bloomfield, New York? Bloomfield, Indiana. Bloomfield, Indiana. And, and how about you, Ryan? Where are you from? Bloomfield, Indiana. So you're classmates then? You go to the same school? Yeah. Yeah. And uh, uh, where are you from? Auburn. 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 Auburn, Auburn where? Auburn, Opelika. Auburn Opelika. <laughs> so, uh, Auburn Opelika. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, oh, okay. Uh, all right, let's, let's, uh, how, how old are you? How old are you? Five. Five. Let's start with, let's start with your invention. What was your invention? Mm, a mud puddle spotter. A mud puddle spotter. Okay, show, show people, show people what that is. What <laughs> is it's an umbrella? Uh-huh. Yeah. And, and then how did you alter the umbrella? Mm, what does that mean? <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, what, so, but the, oops, watch it, careful there, you're going to slide off of that. But what, what is the, uh, <laughs> what, uh, the, the um, there's something different about the umbrella, isn't it? Show the people what's different about the umbrella. It has a light on it. That's right. And that's so that at nighttime you can spot mud puddles, right? All right, let me show you how this works. Now, are you, were you the first place winner? Mm. You don't know. What, did you win any money for this? Yes. How much, how much did you win? I don't know. Yeah. Has the money, have you been given the money yet? No. No. Right. Well, you should look into that for sure. <laughs> So now this is very, it's a, a good idea. You can, when you walk at night, there's uh, well, I'm explaining it to you. You invented it. <laughs> nice to meet you. What, what did you do to your eye there? What happened to your little... Mm, did I you don't... take a swing at her? <laughs> no. All right, nice meeting you. You're from Indiana. You know, I'm from Indiana. Bloomfield, Indiana. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Have you ever seen this show? Mm, yeah. Yeah, sure. <laughs> All right. And, uh, and you're, you're Ryan. Ryan, what, uh, what is your invention? A keep warm bird feeder. A keep warm bird, bird feeder. Excuse me. Is it, is it down here? Okay, let's get this up here. There you go. Now, who, who among you is the grand prize winner? Oh, you are. Okay, we'll be with you in a minute, Susie. All right, show them how the, the bird feeder works there, Ryan. Well, you open the door. Okay, can you see that? You open the door in the back. And you put the, 
the bird seed in, uh -huh. and it goes in there. And so the this would be like the, the wall of your kitchen or your house or your dining room, whatever. Yeah. Here's the bird feeder outside. So yeah. the object of the invention is you can feed the birds without getting cold. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Paul, quick, get Art Linkletter on the phone. Uh, um, hold it. So how did you get the idea for this invention? Well, my mom always has to go out and fill the, be the bird feeder the up in the car. Yeah. in the cold, so I just thought yeah. maybe she could feel it from the inside. Now, now, this is a great idea. You should be very proud of yourself that you were able to come up with this. Thanks. Do you, do you, <laughs> do you, do you, do you have one of these in your house? No. Yeah. <laughs> and and say, say somebody wanted to install one of these, what do you think the installation would run? I don't know. Couple of grand? No, 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 no. You could probably cut right through there for under $100, couldn't you? I don't know. Okay. Well, look into this. Did you get your money yet? No. Oh, brother. This week... <laughs> what kind of a scam is this weekly reader running, anyway? <laughs> they get all of the ideas and the patent rights. They make a fortune. Nobody gets any money. What is this? Do what? Take... Oh, take it down. I'm sorry. There you go. Excuse me. I'm sorry. Do mind? All righty. And then, now we're down to Susie. That was your name, right? Yeah. And, and you're from Auburn in what state? Opelika. <laughs> it's uh, Alabama. Opelika. Opelika. All right. <laughs> you know, Art could be here right now, and I could be doing the insurance commercials. Um... And, and you're the grand prize winner, aren't you? Yes. Now, that, that means you win the most money of anybody in the competition, right? Yes. How much money was it? Five hundred. Five hundred. Now, have you received your money yet? No. This, this lousy rag. Boy, this... Okay, all right. Now, go ahead and... <laughs> what, is the, uh, what, is, what is the invention called, Susie? Your invention is called a... Uh... <laughs> Line leader and keeper. A, a line leader and keeper. And it's for the use of what? What, what is this used for? Children staying in line. When kids go, say they're on, going on a field trip with their teacher and they're walking down the streets and they need to stay together so they don't get into traffic and so forth, they use this, don't they? Yes. Okay. Now, t tell them what it does. When one of the kids lets go of the line, what happens? It beeps. It beeps and the teacher knows to start uh, looking around for it to see who got off the line, right? Yeah. It's sort of like a fish stringer, isn't it? <laughs> Goes right through here. No, no, no. Okay, we're going to demonstrate. Oh, thank God, it's time to demonstrate something. All right, now you, uh, you want to, I'll be the teacher, okay, Susie? And everybody grab a hold of here. And we're, we're going down to Hurley's. <laughs> oh, that's the only, okay, well, that's good enough for the demonstration. You guys, hang on. Okay, and here we go. Now, say we're walking along. Here we go. Can we see this? We're walking along. All right. And then you let go, Susie. And then what happens? First, you have to turn it on. Oh, you have to turn it on. I'm sorry. Uh, someone, please, help me. Help me. All right. You, you turn it on. Here we go. We're going for a little walk now. And you decide to go pet maybe a dog that's come up to say hello. All right. Go ahead. Pet the dog, Susie. Oh, my gosh. What happened to Susie? She's over there with the dog. Nice meeting you. This is a very good idea. You like cats better? Okay. Uh, you guys should get an attorney if you haven't been paid for this stuff yet. Seriously, get somebody to look into that for you. Nice meeting you. Have a good trip back to Opalaka. <laughs> nice meeting you, Ryan. Have a nice trip back to Indiana. And nice meeting you. Thank you very much for being here. You're all lovely kids, okay? We'll uh, be right back with Bill Hicks. back to the streets of New York, the Soviet mission uh, to the United Nations at 136 East 67th Street. Larry, can you hear me? Oh, there's, of course, our own... Uh, 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 Larry, introduce your helper, won't you? Larry, introduce your yeah. helper. Yeah. Yeah. 
<laughs> Hello, <laughs> Ivan. Wanna <No>. do fat? <laughs> no, nine. Well, your accent is nearly perfect. The KGB has trained you well. Please accept this car vacuum as a sign of professional respect. <laughs> Red friend, want to defect? Yes. <laughs> I was just kidding. Even I have some standards. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's it. We get more toys. That's it. Larry, introduce your introduce your little helper there. Oh, hello, Ivan. No. Where are no! you from? Someone stop him, oh, please. Hello. Hello. Hi. What? What um, is your, What are you? I'm Bridget. Jackson. What am I supposed to say? Yeah. Hello? Yeah. And, and what did you kids invent? Do I read? Okay. Uh, that's it, by gosh. Are we out of time? Are we out of time? Oh, no, another commercial. We'll be right back. Gosh, we had plenty of fun tonight, didn't we, Paul? Swell. I want, swell. To, uh, I want to mention that uh, Bill Hicks originally scheduled to be with us tonight. I'm sorry because we were having way too much fun. We, we ran out of time for Mr. Hicks. He's a terribly talented young man, and he'll be back tomorrow. I'm getting the word now that Mike the dog has been run over by a truck, and so he won't be with us. No, no. no. So I don't have to see the movie. No, then. Mike is uh, here, and Bill will be here tomorrow. And okay. I'll catch Bill's movie over the... Over the uh, Did you have a nice time tonight? Yeah. yeah, I had a lovely time. Yeah. I know how much you love working with kids. My, uh, my thanks to everybody who was here tonight. Uh, Lee Marvin, uh, Ryan Johnson, Katie Harding, and uh, Susie Amling. And, of course, also to uh, Larry Bud Melman and uh, Bridget Jackson out there on the street trying to get people to uh, defect. Tomorrow, folks, it's going to be Ray Dong, Dong Chong. <laughs> and uh, Mike the Dog, Tito Puente, and Bill Hicks. Uh, thank you so much. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the uh, program. I'm your host, you can call me Dave, and welcome, as I said, to the show. And uh, today is a holiday, you know? You know what the holiday is today, Paul? That's right, it's Lincoln's birthday. And you know, if Lincoln were alive today, he would be 178 years old. And, well, sure. A and you think Reagan gets confused at press conferences, but see. Ah. Saturday is Valentine's Day. It's the day when everyone here in New York City loves someone, and in many cases, for a fee. So... Yes? Uh, I thought this was pretty strange. Yesterday, while making a speech in Lansing, Michigan, Vice President George Bush said this. You folks from Lansing? From Michigan. All right, good. George Bush said this while in Lansing. He said, these are good times to be a Republican. <laughs> yeah, yeah, just like it's a good time to be an American tourist in Beirut. <laughs> Quiet in here tonight, isn't it, Paul? It's a little, yeah, it's a little quiet. It's a little cool, too. Well, it's all right to be cool. We like it cool. 
yeah. We like it cool, but we don't we don't like it quite this quite. Well, you can. It's huh? nice. You can hear yourself oh, think. It is. It's uh, it contemplative. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's very a solitude. Yes, it is. It's like being in a in a house of worship almost, isn't it? <laughs> Some kind of a shrine or temple, perhaps. <laughs> Now listen to this. I, uh, you know, I, I hate to keep uh, repeating this, but I, I feel like I need to bring you up to date. A couple of years ago, six months ago, eight months ago, I don't know when it happened, General Electric came in and took over RCA, which is the parent company of NBC, and now General Electric is running NBC for all practical purposes. And uh, ever since then, the building here in New York City has literally, and Paula backed me up on this, has been crawling with pinheads. And it's... <laughs> And it's, it, no, it's true, it's true. Haven't you noticed that the, the collective IQ of the company has just kind of, you could just. So today, now listen to this, I get on the elevator with one of these gumballs, and, and he says to me, he says, uh, excuse me, uh, do you guys have any uh, empty cardboard boxes around your office that you're not using? And I said, yeah, as a matter of fact, I, I, think, I, I think I have some, because, you know, I'm, I'm known for my helpfulness. And uh, I said, what are you going to do? Are you packing things up? Or are you changing offices or what? And he says, no, no. He said, I like to have a couple around, and occasionally I'll, I'll jump inside one and make a siren noise. <laughs> right here on the all-new Late Night 87. It's like Vespers now, isn't it, Paul? Yes, it is. Yeah. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, here's our good friend Paul. And Paul, I can... <laughs> you have yeah, extra folks in the band there. Paul Schaefer, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much, yes. Uh -huh. Yes, it is, it is. We are deep. We are in a deep funk this evening with some friends <laughs> who have dropped by uh, to uh, lay a little blues on the good And people. who might they be? Uh, well, we have from the Uptown Horns, uh, uh, gracing us with their presence, on trumpet, Mr. Paul Literal and Mr. Arno Hecht. Paul, well, nice to see you. On the tenor saxophone. Arno, how are you? Very special guest artist this evening on the blues uh, Telecaster Fender guitar. How about it, gang, for Mr. Albert Collins. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen. He plays so nice. Today is uh, Thursday. We're going to get to our viewer mail in just a second, but uh, uh, this floor, this company, this building has 35 floors in it, right? No more than that. 65. 65. And, and so every day you have to ride the elevators, and thousands, literally thousands and thousands of people risk their lives on the elevators each day. And, and we've had a lot of trouble lately. They, they shake, and they, they sort of, you know, drop and then start and stop. Now listen to this. This is the actual sound of the elevator door opening and closing here at 30 Rockefeller Center. Listen. There's opening. Okay, people getting in, getting out, now it closes. That's right. If, if I plunge to my death, you know who to contact. Let's see just how quiet we can get it in here, all right? We'll do a little meditation here tonight, all right? Just a little, let's, let's just pause for a second, kind of collect our thoughts. Paul, do you have any thought collection music there? <laughs> oh, this is, uh, this is like an old uh, Rock Hudson movie in the 50s or something. This is... Meditation. Uh, we're going crazy here. We're going nuts. We've lost it. I can't believe it. Completely crazy. Is it me? No, I am nuts. No, everything's I'm completely fine. Completely crazy. Everything's fine. I've Don't gone worry. nuts. Everything's fine. Uh, let's try our top ten list. Maybe that will help. Uh, the category tonight, as always, from the home office in Scottsdale, Arizona, top ten things Lincoln would say if he were alive today. Top ten things Lincoln would say if he were alive today. Number ten. Through the years, the union has been preserved. Number nine, we still must strive to reach our goal of equality. Number eight, how much money do I get from these Lincoln logs? <laughs> Number seven, I really enjoy the taste of menthol cigarettes. Number six, what the hell is Donahue doing in Russia? Number five, why is the video store always out of Mandingo? 
Number four, I really think I should have been the king in that Civil War chess set. Number three. <laughs> hey, babe, that's me on the $5 bill. <laughs> number two, Ia, Iron Bird. And number one, if Lincoln were alive today, this would be it. That fruit Jefferson gets Monticello, I get a tunnel. <laughs> Uh, Jane Seymour is here tonight. Lovely woman, Paul. I believe you know Jane for quite uh, a while. I know Jane, yeah. And, She's uh, a very romantic lady. Yeah, very romantic. She? That's right. Yeah. She's written that book. Is she still pushing the book, or are we on to other matters with Jane? <laughs> still still pushing the book. Yeah. And really, that's, that's what's at the heart of romance, I think, plugging, plugging a book. Uh, letter number one. This is our viewer mail. Actual letters from actual viewers. Let's get to it, shall we? Dear Dave, what do you do with all the albums and books that are promoted on your show? Sincerely, rock and roll album collector N.D. Rochester and book collector J.E. Rochester from Greenville, South Carolina. Uh, well, gee, uh, N.D. and uh, J.E., why, uh, why, why would you ask a thing like that? <laughs> So far, the show is like one long, dull ache in your head. What are we going to do about that? I don't know. I don't know. What are we in now? Are we doing, huh? are we doing viewer mail now? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's right. We're doing viewer mail now. Okay. Letter number two. It's all attitudinal. Yeah. If we approach it with the proper attitude, we will persevere. That's also one of the things Lincoln would say if he were alive today. <sighs> And you can see me, all right, right? <laughs> Letter number two, dear Dave. Last <laughs> last year, a friend and I were puzzled as to what to get a former college roommate and his lovely wife for their very first Christmas together. Then it came to us a membership to the Larry Bud Melman fan club. It's been 13 months since we applied. What have they received? Nothing. Do you condone this type of activity, Dave? John Cook, Purdue University, West Lafayette, Indiana. Well, gee, John, you know, I'm sorry you had such a bad experience with the Larry Bud Melman fan club. Personally, I've never really heard of that organization. Uh, but, but I have heard of a club that I think you'll enjoy and probably fit right into. Tell them all about it, will you, Bill? Sure, Dave. It's the Gullible Pinheads Club. Just send $500 to Gullible Pinheads Club, Box 7000, Rockefeller Station, New York, New York. Join now, and we'll send you a unique assortment of whatever crap we happen to have laying around. Or maybe we won't. No, don't, don't. Letter, 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 letter number three. Here we go. Dear Dave, recently I discovered that several television comedy shows have given certain popular props to the Smithsonian Institute in Washington, D.C. Happy Days gave them Fonzie's leather jacket, All in the Family gave them Archie's old chair, and Barney Miller gave the Institute their jail door. I was just wondering what late night gave them your biggest fan, P.J. Hoare, Fort Wayne, Indiana. <coughs> well, uh, Mr. Hoare, unfortunately... <laughs> the man's name, I'm sorry, that's his name. Uh, unfortunately, we accidentally gave them the comedy material written for tonight's show. camping in the wilderness here tonight, isn't it? Feel like my head wants a bus open. <laughs> I don't even know what we're doing. Is it four? Is that where we are? Oh, what are we like doing now? It makes now? a difference. So much paperwork. The bureaucracy of running a talk show is mind-boggling. Number four. Hey, Dave. How come we didn't see you on this year's Circus of the Stars? Mike Lawrence. <laughs> 
Tucson, Arizona. Good question. You know, uh, you, you're laughing, but I, I did I did participate in the Circus of the Stars a few years ago, and uh, I don't know, they, they never asked me back. I don't know why. Hal, do we have a tape of my appearance on the uh, Circus of the Stars? Okay, let, all right, good. Let's take a look at it now, and then maybe we'll get to the bottom of it. Ladies and gentlemen, direct your attention to the center ring where you'll be astounded by the trapeze work of David Letterman and his high-flying partner, Ricky Schroeder. By the way, tonight Dave will be performing in a coat and tie and without a net. There goes Ricky. Whoops, <laughs> sorry. What a pleasant way to start tonight's show. <laughs> we have here Jane Seymour, uh, a woman uh, named Frida Kaplan. Oh, oh, what's the name of that? Night, is that Night yeah, Train? Night Train. Nice that to hear it. Night train. Sounds great. Thank you for James everything. James Brown's arrangement. Of huh? Do what? James Brown's yeah, arrangement. Yeah, sounds great. And what are you guys going to do later? Can you tell us now? We're going to do an Albert uh, Collins uh, tune. An original. Uh, I don't know if it's an original. Who wrote it? A Good Fool is Hard to Find is the name of it. All right, we'll look forward to that later in the show. It's a traditional kind of a thing, Thank public you. domain kind of a thing. Our first guest tonight... I may write it. I like it so much, I may write it. <laughs> Our first guest tonight is one... Excuse me for doing this. I don't know what it is. I guess it's... <laughs> I, I shouldn't be doing it. I can't help. I need a good lotion, some kind of lotion, some kind of multi-purpose lotion. I'm just I'm all dried out from the winter. <laughs> Our first guest tonight is, uh, believe me, she is one fabulous babe who likes to be treated by like one fabulous babe, and that's why she's written this book. Here it is right here. It's Jane Seymour's Guide to Romantic Living. Please say hello to Jane Seymour. party out here earlier Wait, trying to in infuse the atmosphere with a synthetic impression that things were happening. Oh, I see. I see. <laughs> it didn't work. So you didn't get married? No, I have not married. No. You're not married. I've been married. I was married once. You were married yeah, once. And ago. then you read the book and you decided you didn't now, you get know, married. I actually haven't read the book either. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't think you had. No. Uh, well, we established last time that the when book was When was the last time you were on? Uh, when you told me that you, you couldn't understand the concept the of the book. The book was over my head. Yeah, it was over your head. Yeah. That's where we last left when off. When was the last time you were here, by the way? when the book was pushing me on stage to talk to you. Uh -huh. When was when that, was Jane? That? When? Well, when was before that? Christmas sometime. I before, don't know. Well, like six months ago? Oh, no. Four months no, ago? No, two months ago. All right. Three well, months and ago. And now you're back. Yeah. All right, let's just settle Why? down now. Just... <laughs> Why am I back? Well, I was just wanting to know what you had done in the meantime. Ah. How things had been going for you. What you'd been up to. Oh, I see. Very right, well, thank you. <laughs> um, so... Have what you... have I done? Well, I had Christmas. Yeah, that yeah. must have been nice in that England, nice. I guess. That was in England. Mm -hmm. And then I came back and I um, got myself some more employment. I'm going to make a movie. Oh, yeah. What kind of movie? It's always useful to do. It's, uh, it's an art movie. It's sort of about obsessional love. An it's... art movie, you say? Yes. Yeah. It's not, not something that's going to be on TV. It's going to be <laughs> in the Theatrical movie theaters. Release? And you'll be lucky if you see it because <laughs> right. it's uh, Argentinian and Spanish. And uh -huh. Where is it going to be that? made? In Argentina in and Argentina? Spain. Yeah. Well, that'll be exciting. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Yeah, let's talk about the book now, I guess. I you don't book? have to talk about the book. Well, Why would you want to talk about a book you haven't read? Well, that's true. Well, because you're on and it's Valentine's Day and here. And people are buying it, right. Uh, is, our, is the thing really selling? Well, it's in its, in its third printing and... Uh, because the first two were smeared, copies. that's why. <laughs> it's an old joke, I'm sorry. <laughs> Uh, third printing, 55, how many copies? I think 55,000. I think they, they sold, no, they sold about 40,000. Oh, I don't know. at 20 bucks a pop, so that's not bad, I guess, huh? I don't know, I haven't seen the money. Yeah. Really? Did you see the money? Well, no, but I don't have anything to do with the book. No. All right, so... Well, it's, now, it's Valentine's Day, you know? Uh, Jane Seymour's Guide to Romantic Living. Now, what is the, what was the most recent romantic thing you did? <laughs> Come here again. No, no, seriously. <laughs> What most was the romantic thing that I yeah. did recently? Because that's what you advocate here in the book. Yeah. Always put, put romance in your life at all costs. Mm. Even if it's the simplest little gesture. 
So what was the last thing you did? I think I cooked dinner. Cooked dinner? Well, mm. now, see, that's not really romantic. That's pretty romantic. Really? For me. I haven't cooked dinner for a long time. Uh-huh. Yeah, but what I've been you, what told not to... It burnt. Uh-huh. Yeah. Well, I'm not doing anything romantic like that again. What was it? It was Chinese. Yeah. It, it had chicken and sort of bits of... Um, bits of orange peel and things, and they said it had to be charred. Mm -hmm. Well, it charred. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so that, that would be here in the book, uh, that an would idea. Be, that would be cook a dinner. A dinner. Cook, cook a dinner, yes. So for 20 bucks, people can get valuable tips like that. Like that, yes. <laughs> um, now, who is, who is this book for, exactly? It's not for men, is it? Yes, it is. Is it for men? Actually, men have been buying the book. It's, mm -hmm. it's got lots of, um, lots of tips and stuff. It's really a case of whether you want to uh, have some kind of spontaneity and take some risks in life and mm -hmm. like give me an example of a risk one might take after having read the book you might kidnap your husband or your wife and take her away or him away when he least, least expects it to that, that's a felony day. and you're gonna do time <laughs> and also if you kidnap your husband or your wife to whom do you send the ransom note see there's, there's nobody there this is true well I guess it's useless to you this book Oh, thanks. Uh, has, uh, I mean, has anything romantic happened in your life since I lost you? A lot of stuff. I, lot I of just, stuff? Uh, yeah, what every have you day. What that was romantic? Oh, jeez. Give, give us a tip for Valentine's Day. Uh, two days ago, I checked into a windowless hotel room. You did? Yeah, <laughs> sat, at the, sat at the edge of the bed and stared at the floor for about eight hours. And then I checked out. Uh, ah. Yeah. So what are you doing for Valentine's Day? Nothing. I don't observe Valentine's Day, per se, as a holiday. Does it observe you? No, it's like one of those. It's like Halloween. It's Valentine's Day and Halloween, they're not... You know, I don't see no. that they're worth the effort to, to really participate. Really? No. You know, they, they have a thing in England. I mean, I never understood why it is in America that people sign their Valentines. Love from, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, it takes all the mystery out of it. The original Valentines were a sort of dedication of true love to someone that were anonymous. Mm -hmm. So you can imagine how much fun that is in England. You mm -hmm. get two or three of these and you don't know who they're from. And if you're married, it's serious problems. Yeah, but that's, that's <laughs> kind of like a John Hinckley sort of deal, that, you know. You get... <laughs> I don't know. I don't know, Jane. I don't know. Let me, let's do a commercial. It's a dull show. Oh, thank you very much. No, no, no point in calling attention to the obvious, though, is there? Well, uh, we'll stay. That costs nothing? Sure. Yeah. Well, I think the whole point of Valentine's Day is to tell somebody what you really feel about them. So you maybe write down on a piece of paper how you feel about mm -hmm. them. If they're nice things, that's mm -hmm. nicer. Yeah. Well, Maybe, you can, yeah. But that's the kind of thing you, you can do that every day. No, can't you can't. You? Maybe people don't, it doesn't occur to them to do that. They'll go around to a shop and they'll sift through a hundred cards looking for the one that says exactly what they mean to say. They could have written that anyway. Well, they could have written it anyway. Yeah, exactly. I'm just suggesting that maybe they should write it anyway or find some old snapshots, you know, from the year, from, you know, pictures they've taken and sort of make a collage of them so there's a nice picture that represents what happened that year in their yeah, lives yeah. together or... Uh, but you don't you know. do that kind of stuff. Sure, I do that kind of stuff. Do you really? No, every single day, David, you know. Don't Not every single day, like maybe once in a while. Mm -hmm. but, but you have people to do that for you, don't you? Of course. <laughs> don't you have like a staff of... Uh of kids. People from somewhere who come in no. and, and run things for you? No, I'm afraid not. You, you must have uh, footmen and, and houseboys oh. and that kind of thing? Yeah, I forgot about the footmen and the houseboys. <laughs> well, you do have, because uh, there's a picture of you there with the footman in there. With the footman in the house. No, this is the girl that, that looks after my house, well, see. feeds the dogs, cats, looks after the horses, and helps me when I have to drop the baby. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, well, I wouldn't say she's a well, footman. No, but that's my point. It's easy to be romantic when you have a staff, you know. Yeah. I could be... Yeah. yeah. If I had a... If I had people... You don't have a staff, give me a break. No, at the, at the house, no. At I'm the house, about, No, yeah. I, do, I do it all. You know, do you I have clean out kids? the gutters. I don't have any children. No. no. Well, you see, when you have kids and you go to work, I mean, anyone out there will tell you that uh, it's very hard to do both at the same time, so you sometimes have to delegate. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you have to have someone help you out. Mm -hmm. Right. You know, uh, would it be a good gift for me this Valentine's Day? What do you I, want? I need a new staple gun, seriously. <laughs> Just putting up some insulation there in the family room. Oh, Jane, give my best to uh, David Brenner and Oprah. Okay. And, and, and make sure you... Well, we'll be right back, folks. Yeah! Monday on this program, uh, Jack Elam will be here, Mary Lou Henner, and Iggy Pop. What do you, what do you think, Paul? Was she steamed? Jane, you think? Jane? Yeah. Well, she's a very, very romantic lady. I know, but... You think That's all I know yeah. about her. Uh, and uh, coming up later in uh, this half hour, Frida Kaplan will be here, and uh, as you've been listening all night, uh, Albert Collins and the boys in the band uh, will be performing a number for us. You know, uh, every, then, uh, every now and then a, a man like myself has to break out of his humdrum urban life and go to a place that brings out his primitive animal instincts. Unfortunately, 
Tony Randall wasn't home. <laughs> so we took our cameras instead to the National Outdoor Sportsman's Show. Watch closely. Like that. Yeah, now the, the goose shows up and then what happens? Then you shoot him. <laughs> oh, jeez, that's horrible. This, these are duck calls. Uh -huh. Got one around my neck and I'll blow that for you. <laughs> And then the duck shows up, and what do you do? And you, you shoot, shoot him. Yeah, that's right. A new call on the market's a deer call. Mm -hmm. Excuse me. Yeah. You feel all right? You had the omelet this morning. I'm I know. sorry. This is a dying rabbit. Oh, God. We blow that so coyotes and foxes will come in. Uh -huh. And when they do, we shoot them. <laughs> So now, would that attract a dying rabbit? Oh, no, uh, yeah, I see. A dying rabbit attracts a fox. I thought it'd be interesting if it actually attracted a dying rabbit, then maybe for a change you'd nurse it back to health. <laughs> we don't do that. We no shoot them. No, I know you do. So what are you moving today? A lot of plastic worms. If you're a saltwater fisherman. Excuse me, could you gentlemen uh, lean away a little bit? Just, yeah, I'm sorry. Thank you very much. You should, have, you should have a sneeze guard over your worms here. These right here, these would be good with pesto sauce, you know? <laughs> like something you might cough up after a long bout with the flu. Doesn't cough. Right. Well, I'm in the turkey calling business. I manufacture turkey calls. You know what you could do? You have a little stuffed turkey here, and you have the call. You could almost work up like a ventriloquist act, couldn't you? We'll work like Howard Johnson lounges and stuff upstate. It'd be great. All right, now, uh, just go nuts with that thing. I was playing with this earlier, and for the life of me, Joe, I can't, I can't get this thing to make a sound at all. <laughs> you people are very proud of him, aren't you? You've had him to all the best clinics, haven't you? <laughs> when you decided that you wanted a career in sophisticated finance, how long ago was that? Four years. Mm -hmm. Did you uh, probably have visions of a, of a huge uh, mahogany paneled office downtown in the financial district and uh, uh, exciting lunches and travel and so forth? Sure. Yeah. And, and here today you're at the uh, sports and the fisherman show standing next to a guy selling perpetual chamois. Uh, does it occur to you, Holly, that something has gone desperately wrong? <laughs> These are mad fighting coons. During the archery season, the elk go into what they call a rut, and they do... What does that mean? A, a, it's a, a cycle where the bulls take over a herd of cows and service them uh, to have cows in the spring. And, and the, when, when you say service, you mean check their water, check the oil, or take the hooves? This, this is the, what we call a grunt tube, and it's just a vacuum cleaner hose, and it simulates a elk stroke. Have you ever been to the uh, Playboy Mansion in California? Tons of times. What, what is it like there? It just must be awful, isn't it? No, it's great. Um, Mr. Hefner is very nice. Mm -hmm. is, it, is it a sanitary place? Do you get the feeling that it's okay to be there? Oh, it's, it's, yeah, it's very sanitary. You, you, you didn't get in the pool, did you? I got in the pool. Ooh, jeez. Oh, my God. Uh, it's kind of chlorine in the pool. Okay? Yeah. All right, this is, uh, this is like one of those uh, once-in-a-lifetime opportunities. We, we've uh, assembled here kind of a, well, a, a super jam, actually. <laughs> guest has been in the produce business and has earned the nickname the Queen of the Kiwi. Her company is the leading developer and merchandiser of exotic produce in the world, and she's here tonight with some examples. Please welcome Frida Kaplan and her produce. Frida? Hi, Frida. So nice to see you. Thank you very Thank much you. for being here. How, how did delight. you get the, uh, the name Queen of the Kiwi? Well, I think it's because we introduced the kiwi fruit. Mm -hmm. Do we have one of those here, or are they yes, right there? That's a kiwi, why, right? We, we, here is one of the ones that, that we introduced, uh -huh. and <laughs> let me tell you. That is one of the this, ones you introduced yeah, right there. Yeah, this is a little old. This uh -huh. is about yeah. uh, now, 25 years old. Originally, what did they call this? This was originally called a Chinese gooseberry. Uh -huh. And you thought it would be easier to market it as a kiwi. 
when well we found it's a little difficult it took us about two months to uh, sell the first 240 uh -huh. flats and one of the people we were working with suggested that maybe we ought to change the name and call it kiwi fruit because it was from, from new, new zealand. zealand it was originally called a chinese gooseberry chinese gooseberry okay. all right show off some of the other things i think people are probably familiar with the kiwi by now but there are other things out here that we have no idea what they are well, your producers asked that I bring probably the weirdest thing I could think mm. of. And I well, don't think we have ever seen anything over the years as unusual as the kiwano. This kiwano. Is the, that's the African horned melon. I thought the kiwano was a men's community service club. <laughs> am, I, am I? Am I? Hello? Can you hear me, Frida? Hello? I hello? can hear you. <laughs> wow, that is strange. But it feels like a, is it, a, uh, it grows on a tree? It grows on a vine. Uh -huh. not, a, not a citrus fruit, but a... It is a fruit vine. Fr a fruit vine. Let's As a open it up. matter of fact, uh, Let's open right. it up. this would probably that. be a very big surprise to everybody listening here. Mm -hmm. Wow. This is called an African horned melon. That's what it originally wow, was called. Wow, that's beautiful. That, it's, it's sort of like a, uh, a pomegranate in that the seeds are all in there with the fruit, right? That's very interesting. Everybody from New York said it looks like a pomegranate. Everybody from California said it looks like a cucumber. Mm -hmm. Can, <laughs> do you mind if I try it? How do you eat no, this? No, I'd love would, to. Would this be like a breakfast fruit, or uh, how would you? Well, well, you, you can't can, eat it at all with those here, seeds. No, here do you, you, do you are. Eat the oh seeds? no, you eat the seeds and all. All right. You don't mind my hands? No, here you I certainly are. don't mind. Thank Tell you. Tell me what you think it tastes like. Hmm. Well, that's damn near inedible. <laughs> It's not very good. <laughs> I must tell you, this was flown from New Zealand for, especially oh, yeah. for the show. You this can't, is you can't fly those. This <laughs> you can't ride them. Well, you know, it's just full of seeds, but it's not very good. Thank you very much. All right, Frida, let's go on. So the Kiwano, so-so on the Kiwano. <laughs> All right, let me give you something that'll really turn you on, particularly after Jane Seymour was on the show. All right, well. Let me give you this. Turn off the cameras then, and let's go to work. This is... <laughs> This is passion fruit. Let's see if it turns you on. And Here. again, the, uh, the fruit, uh, the seeds are contained right in there with the... All right. Okay, let's see yeah. how you come out with this. Mm-hmm. Ooh. <laughs> oh. But, wow, it's very, uh, very tangy, isn't it? And it's absolutely wonderful over vanilla ice cream. And it's okay to eat the uh, seeds? The seeds, that's what makes you passionate. Let me try a little one, one more. All right. <laughs> oh, we'll take this one. Okay. Yeah. They, <laughs> are, they are addictive. Mm -hmm. Could you, uh, could you cut my meat for me, please? <laughs> That's good, except I don't like the notion of crunching up the seeds. Okay, Frida, let's keep rolling. All right. I noticed that you are... The passion are... fruit is better than the kiwano. I noticed that you are a cigar smoker. I'm a person that absolutely adores anybody well, to really smoke, should. so we've it's got horrible, something horrible, to take uh, its place. Yeah. We got something, and I'd like to see you smoke this. <laughs> I, I, I used to hear that at parties in the 60s. Remember that? When you're in college, all right, go ahead. But instead of smoking this, you chew it. Now, just chew it. Just take a bite of this and chew it. Yeah. Yep. That's a. Uh, this is a carob. Very sweet. Yeah, carob. This it's is what they to make. Yeah. This yeah. is what they. This is the low calorie. The where do, low where calorie, do these come from? These come from Baja California, and that's in Mexico. Can, can all of this stuff be grown in the United States, or do you import all of it? Uh, both the. Uh, carob can be grown in the United States. It is grown in California, a lot of local trees. Uh -huh. okay. For the first year, this has been grown here Let's in keep Kiwi, rolling, of course. Freedom. We got All a lot right. of stuff to go here. Very good. This is. Ooh, this this kind of comes on you after a while, though, doesn't it? Oh, wait till you see this. These oh, are God, blood that's beautiful. oranges. Look at that. That's lovely. These that, are blood oranges. That, that is citrus fruit, then. That's citrus yeah. fruit. You want to try on that? Yeah, I'd be happy to. Okay. Will you just eat this out of there, like that? Just out of there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Can you blow it like you did in the segment a minute ago? <laughs> I've blown the whole show. <laughs> That's great. That's very good. Blood fruit. All right. Now it's we'll related. It's a combination. Of, how do we get these things? They're all uh, biological mistakes or what? Uh, no, but if you want to get them, what you do is you go to your local supermarket right. and ask for them. No, I understand that, but we're, this is like a combination of what? This is a part uh, tomato, part... Uh... No, that's a variety called the Moro. Mm -hmm. It's a variety of orange. Okay. And in and of itself, then. All right. Now, here's something Hurry, a little Frida, different. We want to get to all of this stuff. All right. Here's something a little different. How are we doing? 30 seconds, Frida. Oh, my gosh. we got to go. All right. That's a cactus leaf. And use that exactly this like you do. This is not bad. This is not bad. All right. Show us a couple more quick before all we run. All right. Any of this stuff going to be really popular this year? All of it is going to be popular. And this is, instead of a cigar, I want you to try a red banana. A red banana. And but, this in, has but in the banana family. 
In the banana right. family. Okay. Great, great. A red banana. <laughs> All right. What else? What and, else do you have? Thank you very much. Wash it down with a little miniature baby cauliflower. Wow. Now, how did we get the cauliflower this tiny? Oh, this is that stuff from Chernobyl, right? <laughs> Yeah. This was a specially grown seed. Okay, one more, one more. All right, something that it hasn't come on the market yet, and this is a coral oyster mushroom. Now, where these are? These were developed by a geneticist here in the United States in Salt Lake City, and <laughs> sure, I'll be eating that. There's, a, there's some kind of warped DNA problem here. Right? Uh, and, and you would cook with these, or yeah, you would cook with these. They're safe to eat. I don't know. I'll find out as soon as you're finished. Oh, 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 oh. Well, that's certainly cute. Okay. Well, this is, uh, this is amazing stuff. And what is this, quickly? That is an Easter eggplant. That's a baby white eggplant. Uh -huh. And the whole family of baby vegetables. This stuff's amazing. Good luck. Thank you very much for being here, Frida. I certainly enjoyed meeting you. Well, uh, we'll be right back. Don't worry.